I unmute. Okay, I think we'll make a start, folks. We're, we're expecting a few more to join us. Um, and uh, but I don't want to hold us up because there's quite a lot on the agenda for this evening. Um, so firstly, if I can just thank you for coming along to us in your evening, it's very much appreciated. We've got speakers here tonight from um, the University of Plymouth, David's with us, from City College Plymouth, Lowndes is with us, Hannah is here from Babcock International, and Alison is here, um, who's done this for me more than once before actually, so she's becoming She's becoming my double act. Alison's here from uh, Princess Yachts and she's going to talk to us about their training program. There's more people dropping in now. That's super. Um, we've got an hour and a half session. So there's several speakers. We've also got two apprentices with us from two award winning apprentices with us. And I'm going to have a conversation with them about halfway through the evening. So I hope you will find the content interesting. I hope it will get you uh, interested in, in joining the maritime sector, that you'll feel that you will have learned uh, more about our sector by the end of the evening. Um, please ask questions in the chat uh, function and we'll keep, an, myself and my fellow speakers will keep an eye on that to make sure that we answer it. Uh, we've got some video um, to share with you, sometimes people talking, so it, hopefully the time will pass quickly. So I'm just going to share my screen and we'll get started. Okay, I hope you can see that. Lance, can you give me a thumbs up or down if you can see that? Okay. Um, so my name is Lorna Wagner. I'm the Programme Manager for Careers and Outreach for Maritime UK. Maritime UK is an organisation that is the, the, the umbrella organisation that represents the whole sector. So I'm going to open the um, session this evening just talking to you a bit about the sector and the breadth of it and all the different industries that are part of that sector. So the maritime strategy uh, was a document, the 2050 strategy was a document that was written by the Department for Transport nearly six years ago now, long before anyone knew that COVID was going to be a thing and 2020 was going to be this crazy year that we all went through. But the backbone to that document was talking about the maritime sector and talking about the amazing growth that was going to happen within the sector up until the year 2030. They're talking about the sector doubling in size. So double the number of jobs. And it's not all the same jobs again. The reason that the sector is about to double in size is that um, there's lots of new jobs, there's lots of new industries that are developing within our sector in response to research and innovation and other priorities that the government's putting out there, not least the carbon net zero target that we have for 2050, but also things like robotics and autonomous shipping and so on that I'll come back to later. So if we start off by talking about careers at sea and on shore, sometimes when you think about maritime, it, it's really natural for people to automatically think that that means a career at sea. And it can do, it absolutely can mean a career at sea. And that could be as um, part of the Royal Navy, as part of the Merchant Navy, which really are all working boats other than defence boats. It could be in the cruise sector, it could be in um, leisure boats, it could be on super yachts. You could find yourself, a, a build a career as a super yacht crew person. And you might think of the, the maritime sector being limited to that, but it's way broader than that. So it includes everything that's to do with boat building, naval architecture, which is the, the science of design and, uh, and building of boats, refurbishment, really the life cycle of a boat. Um, whether that's small boat building or it's huge cargo ship building or perhaps even new large ships for the Royal Navy, and the government has just um, announced its shipbuilding strategy. So that's one example. Sea fishing and aquaculture also form part of the maritime sector. 
Um, so when people, my background is as a um, working in an FE college with 16 to 19 year olds. And if I had a pound for every time someone said to me that they wanted to be a marine biologist, and I used to say to them, that's fantastic, but how are you actually going to turn that into a job? Marine science, aquaculture, sea fishing, all forms part of the maritime sector. And we've got some super resources, which I'll refer to later on in my presentation um, that support you finding out more about those types of careers. Super yachts we've talked about, it's not just crewing on them, but designing them, getting involved with the refurbishment um, and the whole business around them. Ports, harbours and marinas. Now, if, if someone had said to you what's in the maritime sector, you, you might well have said ports and shipping and the big cranes that you see at ports, but the, the management of harbours and, and marinas. And I know that since I've been doing this job, it's made me look at those sorts of uh, workplaces differently. Um, those of you that are joining us from the Southwest tonight will know Brownsea Island in, in Poole Harbour. And I spent a day there in the summer. And when we came back into Poole Harbour and we were sitting having an ice cream in the sunshine, I was suddenly struck by the number of people that were wandering around with blue polo shirts on that said that they worked in Pool Harbour. Now I've been to Brownsea Island and Pool Harbour many times, but I've never really noticed. And that's one of the problems with the maritime sector. It's kind of there, but it's a bit of a secret. So we're absolutely delighted that you're with us tonight, finding out more about Britain's best kept secret. Someone asked me recently what the difference was between a port and a harbour. And I was rely re reliably informed that a harbour is a naturally occurring place where boats go. It may well have been built upon and developed after that, but a port is man-made from the beginning. So there you go. If you've learned nothing else tonight, that's what I was told. Um, the cruise sector has obviously had a terrible time through uh, the COVID pandemic, but it will bounce back. But it's a massive industry um, in the UK and responsible for a huge number of people's employment. Um, leisure boating is everything that's fun, I guess. So it's smaller yachts and boats um, and the whole industry around that, which is enormous. It includes actually the ships that sell, the shops that sell everything that you could want to buy to put on your yacht, for example. The Merchant Navy we've, we've talked about. Engineering is a massive industry within the sector. And what's really exciting is the way that that is developing currently. I said about autonomous vessels and about robotics. We've talked about um, carbon net zero. So all those big ships out there that are running on diesel engines, if the sector is to meet that target of being carbon net zero, will have a different sort of engine in them. And they'll be running on a different sort of fuel source. Um, engineering also, you know, the maritime sector supports wind and wave power generation. And in order to meet the government's targets to um, produce as much wind power as they say we will in the next 10 years, I can tell you that that that, the, that, that particular industry are telling me we are, we are 22,000 engineers short, electrical and mechanical engineers to support the the, the building, the installation, the maintenance, the repair, the monitoring of um, wind farm turbines around the UK. So if you were thinking about a career in engineering and you're looking for a career that's a bit different and it's not just going to the office nine till five, perhaps you might think about supporting wind farm generation. Inland waterways, that's everything from water taxis to city cruises on, on the Thames to um, short distance ferries such as I mean, it's a bit contentious, but the ferries that run from Southampton to the Isle of Wight kind of get put into the inland waterways um, a bracket. Um, work boats and tugs, and I tell anyone that will listen that tugs are my absolute favourite. I just think they're really cute. But all those boats that are just working away around the harbours, around the ports, supporting, often supporting the bigger ships. And then like any other sector, any other business, the business services. Now we have specific ones like maritime lawyers, for example, or ship brokers who take responsibility for booking space. You know, those containers that go onto the cargo ships, the, the negotiation of the booking of that space. But we also, as a sector, need 
human resources people. We need warehousing staff. We need security staff. We need financial people who either write the invoices or prepare the invoices or chase the invoices to make sure that they get paid. We also have people that work in marketing and we have people that work in PR and so on and so forth. And what you need to know is that the maritime sector employs 1.1 million people in the UK. So that's one in approximately every 66 human beings in the UK. It's not a surprise when you consider that we're an island nation, but it is a surprise when you think about being surrounded by those many people and one of them working in the maritime sector up and down the land. So it's a huge, huge sector. We also know that the pay is really good. The average national wage currently is 29,000 pounds. In the maritime sector, it's 38,000. And if you choose to do a job that's at sea, you'll probably find that you won't work for 52 weeks of the year or, or 56 weeks of the year if, you, if, you're if you're lucky enough to get six weeks holiday. But you might work one week on and one week off or three weeks on and three weeks off if you were on a um, if you were working in one of the wind farms, for example, and you can still end up working, I don't know, 26 weeks of the year and be paid very handsomely for it. There are lots of different ways to come into the sector. There's full time jobs. The, um, our, our sector is very good at supporting lifelong learning for adult job seekers who are looking to come in and develop themselves and, and build a career and collect further qualifications. And apprenticeships you will know about. We'll come back to apprenticeships later. But I wonder if you've ever heard of a cadetship. A cadetship is like an apprenticeship, but it's for a career at sea. And you are sponsored by a shipping company rather than employed by the shipping company. But you'll spend blocks of time at a marine academy and then blocks of time at sea. So you might start off at, um, at a marine academy for four months and then go to sea for four months and then you'll be back for four months and then you're at sea for six months or whatever. And your programme can last up to four years. But if you're looking for a career at sea, that's probably the, the best way to go. The green revolution we've talked about. So um, having clean oceans, clean maritime, decarbonisation by 2050 is massive. There are huge projects out there that are developing carbon net zero um, technologies. And if you're interested in science and you're interested in ecology and you're interested in the STEM subjects, this is a really good sector for you to come and investigate. There's a, a project in Northern Ireland at the moment where they're looking at um, carbon zero, emission zero, um, water taxis and they will move on to ferries and there's a foil which is a bit like an aeroplane wing that is underneath the sea but actually the boat kind of floats on the top um, and they're looking at ways of, of partnering with um, public transport on land so that people could potentially um, travel from home to work including crossing crossing the water to, to Northern Ireland, and that be a completely carbon net zero um, journey, which is really exciting. So if the environment excites you and if science is, is your thing, look into the maritime sector. We've talked about the sector doubling in size by 2030 and lots of different ways to get your training funded. Um, there's a, there's a, a regular shift of people that decide to come into maritime, to go to sea, they work at sea for a few years, whether that's in the Royal Navy or the Merchant Navy, and then at some point in their life they want to settle on shore, and that sea to shore is a big, a big change. But actually lots of other people are coming into maritime because they see it as a strong and growing and thriving sector from other sectors, and we know that adult job seekers who unfortunately perhaps have lost their job as a result of the pandemic are finding new jobs within the sector. So think about your transferable skills and, and move in. So we have um, all sorts of um, resources for you on the Maritime UK Careers website. There's a good careers area. It's not perfect and it needs an update. Um, and I will get to that eventually, but there is a good careers area. We have longer videos. This is, they're called the information activities. This is where you'll find um, a 20 minute video on a career at sea or I've got a super one that's Portsmouth International Port where they talk about the different business functions of the port 
and, um, and break that down. So you start to understand a port as a business. If you grow, if you're lucky enough to grow up by the coast, I often think you, you don't see the port as a career opportunity. You just see it there. And if you don't grow up by the coast, you don't see it anyway. But the one in Portsmouth employs three and a half thousand people and has really a really strong record of apprenticeship and investing in their employees for them to develop themselves and gather further qualifications and, and promotion. So really nice videos there. And if you're looking for how to become a marine biologist, what a ship broker does, how navigation works. Um, <coughs> there's another <coughs> super video on there that um, is how to get a career in conservation and another one um, on uh, the people that look after the, the lighted buoys that are out at sea, that, that sort of safety aspect. But the, you can, these are um, freely available for you to watch. We've also got virtual tours of boats, ships and ports that are really interesting. And if we have time later, I'll come back to the, um, the Royal Navy virtual tour of HMS Protector, which is the nice patrol ship that goes down to the um, Antarctic. We don't have time to show it tonight, that's fine. I'll make sure that you all get a copy of this after the session and it will be up on our, on our website. We've also got videos. And again, if we have time later on in the session, I'll run the, the um, Southwest careers video for you. And then there are my contact details. Um, so that was just supposed to be a quick overview and an introduction to the sector, just to whet your appetite a little bit. But what I'm going to do now is to hand over to um, the first of our speakers. I can just open up my other laptop, beg your pardon for my running order. Here we go. So the, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand over to Alison, who works for um, Princess Yachts, who's there and ready to go. Hello, Alison. Nice to see you've got a much more interesting backdrop than I have. And I'll, um, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Hi, Lorna. Thank you very much for the introduction. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Alison Thompson, as Lorna said, and I head up the Learning and Development Division of Princess Yachts. I want to share with you this evening um, the journey an apprentice would take with us and some of the career journeys. So I have a couple of short videos to show you and a short presentation. Let me just see if I can share my screen as I seamlessly try to do that. In fact, let's have a look just a second. Sorry, just bear with me just a second. Can everyone see that okay? Yeah. Yes, you okay. can. That's great, brilliant. So let me just start off with introducing you to Princess Shots as an organization. Okay, so Princess Shorts was established in 1965 in Plymouth. Um, we are based around seven different sites and we are renowned for integrity of design, engineering and build. We operate over 1.1 million square foot of production space and we build craft from 40 foot to 130 foot, which are sold for a network of distributors and dealers in over 65 countries. And the reason why I mention that is that we do no direct selling ourselves. So we actually do all of our sales through our distributors across the world. And each uh, boat that we build during the year has a customer attached to it. We have over 3000 people working for us. Um, and the reason why we rely so heavily on our skills is that over 80% of our boats are handcrafted by our skilled craftsmen. So this is why we rely very heavily on our apprenticeship scheme to make sure that we as a business are not just fit for now, but also fit for the future. We lead the industry for investment in new product and technology. 
with an award-winning in-house design and development team. So we look to release up to six brand new designs each year. And you know, you'll see that those are some of the leading class yachts across the organization and across the world. We currently have 160 apprentices across the business. Um, each one joining us. So last year we had our largest intake to date with 66 brand new apprentices joining us. So while uh, the pandemic obviously impacted our business and also our apprentices, I'm really pleased to report that there was no break in learning for any of them and they continue to work through their apprenticeship. We actually ended up with a true 25-75 gender split last year with female applications against every single one of our apprenticeship areas. You'll see here that we offer them in a whole variety of different things from boat building, both in bench and fit out. So bench is the area where you would actually start to construct and make the furniture that go into our boats. Fit out is where you take that furniture and you fit it into the boat itself. In our marine engineering apprenticeship, we cover both electrical and mechanical. And we have fabricating and welding, composites, information technology, business admin, finance, marketing, leadership and also HR. So lots of different areas across the business where our apprentices make an impact and a difference. In terms of progression, we have dedicated leadership pathways. We have our own dedicated management development programme called Crafted in Plymouth. We have career pathways to ensure that everyone progresses through the uh, business to their chosen career path. We offer up to level seven and we've had a 98% retention in our apprenticeship program since 1997, year on year. Um, so what are we looking for for an apprentice? Well, we will be, you will be expected to have or be working towards level four or equivalent and appreciate that it can be quite difficult uh, this year and challenging, but we work with our training provider to make sure that you get the additional support that you need. So whether you have that qualification or not, please don't think that that's a barrier. For us, there's a whole host of other skills and qualities that we will be looking at in a prospective apprentice to make sure that we're open to everyone. We do look to see whether you've got practical hand-on skills and we like to see in the interviews any projects that you might have completed at home or at school and college. And in fact, that's probably our most favourite part of any interview. So if you've been helping your parents, your granddad, your friend, anybody at all, and you've built something or you're really proud of a project that you've worked on, then send us some photos, bring it along, talk to us about that project, because that's really what we want to be able to see. We're looking for someone with potential, a real can-do attitude, and a willingness to learn new skills. We also look to see what your hobbies are. You know, are you a sports person? Do you enjoy doing something slightly different? Do you enjoy making and fixing things at home? Maybe you're into gaming. So we really, when we're interviewing you, looking for a true picture of you as an individual, and we'll get that by you sharing that with us. Don't forget to take your time when you complete your application and have a copy to hand during your interview. And again, we look to make sure that you have a passion and an interest in Princess Shots. Remember to do your research um, before your interview so you can talk to us about maybe you've got a favourite boat that you've seen building or you've seen something of the business elsewhere, which has really interested you. Or maybe you know someone that works for us. We have up to three generations working with us at any one time. So maybe your mum, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your granddad, <laughs> your mum, your dad has worked for us. So use them as an information resource and actually ask them lots of different information about the organisation before you come along to your interview, because that will really show us that you're interested in working for us. And if you wanted to apply, we actually have a dedicated apprenticeship page on our website now. So again, you would just need to go to Princess Shots apprenticeship page and there's a link there with all of the information there for you, together with lots of interesting videos as well. So in terms of our timeline, so we open up applications in November for the year before and that stays open until the end of March. So we have just four weeks now before our application closes for 2021. During March and May, we will be sending you some English maths and practical assessments so we get a better feel for you um, as a person and then we'll be shortlisting you as well and we will be carrying out interviews in May. In June, we look to make an offer to you and in July to August, we actually start to do your onboarding. We have lots of different paperwork for you. We look at organising your PPE and your um, other work that you might need in readiness for us to start with you in September. In 
terms of our program overview, we work in partnership with South Devon College and that partnership works exceedingly well for us. They're a true based uh, Marine Academy. So first year apprentices attend college Monday to Thursday term time only. And during your term breaks, you come into Princess Shorts and actually start to take part in different projects. We will um, let you spend some time with one of our instructors honing your different skills, just so you start to really get a good feel for our business. Second and third years attend college one day a week and fourth years will be based in the business full time with regular reviews. It's probably worth mentioning at this point that we do a compressed week. So we work Monday to Thursday from seven o'clock in the morning till five o'clock in the evening. And that's the same for our apprentices as well. We want you to really feel that you are working for us right from day one. So you'll go to college in your uniform as well. And while that can be a bit of a culture shock for everyone just to begin with, very quickly all of our apprentices and in fact me included get used to only working four days a week and having a nice long weekend where you get a true work-life balance. Each apprentice has their own highly experienced business mentor to make sure that you are learning from the best in our business. We're passing on those craft skills to you as you start your career and start to build your career with us. Some of the programme benefits for you include both on and off the water activities. We want you to feel right from day one that you're immersed in the marine experience. So you'll be going out to sea and doing a whole host of different things. We'll be working on your team building and leadership skills. We will involve you in Princess Short specific projects. We might even be involved in careers events and different community projects as we give something back to the local community as well. You'll also be working with your RYA or your Royal Yachting Association qualifications. So you'll look at learning your Powerboat Level 2 qualification, your sea survival skills, your VHF radio operators license and also first aid at sea. So we make sure that you're safe right from day one. And as well as your leadership and team working, we'll also be working on your communication and creative thinking skills. So as you're working towards your level three in any of our apprenticeships, you'll be having these additional enhanced program benefits as well. And in addition to that, you will also have access to a high tech digital centre. So that makes sure that you have the opportunity to really immerse yourself in the latest digital innovation as it comes to the market and often before it comes into our business. So it gives you that leading edge there. We also have a dedicated learning academy at South Devon and what you'll see here are some pictures of that. So the top left hand corner is our V40 hull being delivered into our academy. On the right hand side shows you what the academy, um, sorry, what the V40 looks like when it's finished and it's on the water. And we've done that because we want to make sure that as an apprentice, you have the opportunity to work on our boats right from day one. And the academy replicates one of our boat lines down to your buzzers, your break times, um, your health and safety, all of the regulations that you need to do. And all of our apprentices work in that area. So you have a really good understanding of what it takes and all of the craftsmen it takes to build one of our boats. So we make sure that our business isn't just fit for now, but fit for the future. And the pictures that you have at the bottom there are the first two or two of our apprentices being interviewed by the BBC. And then we have some key personnel from Princess Shots and also South Devon College and the marine um, industry there as we opened up the business for the first day. So that was really exciting for us. These are some of the other activities that you might get involved in during your apprenticeship with us. So we've got college open days. So that's where our apprentices go along to various different events and actually talk about an apprenticeship with us and what it means to them and why they chose a career with us. Obviously things are slightly different now and we're doing things virtually, but we're doing a lot of insert days through a virtual experience so that our um, prospective apprentices and um, various local schools get to understand how possible it is to have a career within the marine industry. We would ordinarily take you to the boat show so you see our finished product as part of your induction program so that you'll have the opportunity to look, see, feel, get on and experience a finished princess boat and we normally have six or seven um, on display there. You'll also have the opportunity to see some of our competitors and see some of the other types of um, vessels that there are in the marine industry so things like ribs and there's a um, wooden clipper ship and lots of different areas there so really interesting day for you. Down at the bottom there um, some of our apprentices took part as ambassadors in the National Marine Aquarium big boat build so what you can see in the first photo are a lot of school children there is 120 school children key stage two and key stage three 
I'm actually sailing on one of our yachts across the Plymouth Sound, but virtually. And it, for some of them, that was the first time they'd been to sea and certainly one of the first times they'd been on a princess shop. During that big boat build, what we did was each of our ambassadors worked with one of 35 schools. We presented each of those schools with a flat packed boat and our apprentice ambassadors went into those schools and helped construct that boat, helped design that boat. They then all came back into the National Marine Aquarium with the aim that each school could take 35 boats out sailing at any one time. They were due to take part in the Mayflower 400 celebrations, but obviously that was put on hold thanks to COVID. And then on the right hand side, something totally different from yachting, but some of our top performers in our apprentices, we took them away onto into um, RNAS Yeovilton and they had a day taking part in RAF team building skills. So I was lucky enough to go along with them. So we were camouflaged up, we were attacked by assassins. We actually went up and flew in the Merlin helicopter that you can see behind us. And that's an experience I'm sure them and I will never forget. We had the opportunity to eat rations in a field. We had a really great fun day. So, you know, every so often we try to do something different with our apprentices to actually really build life experiences for them. During the induction week, we always try to do something different. So for um, two years ago, we took everyone away to Heatree for a residential team building exercise. And so you can see one of the photos there where they were taking part in that. And in the bottom right hand corner, that was what happened in September last year, where all of our apprentices spent a week at Mount Batten doing lots of um, sailing and water based activities as part of building the team of the apprenticeship cohort they were in and also helping with their leadership skills. So just to finish off, um, Princess Shots has done really well over the last 12 months in a whole host of various different awards. And you'll see that we've won Best Apprenticeship and Leadership Scheme in the 2019 Boat Builder Awards. That was a fantastic event, which was held in Amsterdam. And I was really pleased to take part in to be able to um, accept that award on behalf of Princess Yachts. During National Apprenticeship Week last year, you'll see that um, one of our apprentices was named Prin uh, Marine Engineer of the Year in the Plymouth Manufacturing Group. They were highly commended. We also had Business Apprentice of the Year, runner up and first place, a rising star for our Business Apprentice of the Year for um, IT. In the South Devon College um, Awards, we are one of our apprentices won Marine Engineer of the Year first and second place and Staff Apprentice Ambassador of the Year was highly commended to Princess Shots. We made it for the first time in the top 100 apprenticeship employer rankings which I'm really proud of. We won the STEM award in the Maritime UK awards quite recently and that was for the big, build, big boat build that I talked about um, just now. We were also highly commended the National Apprenticeship Awards but the one that I'm most proud of was uh, the Princess Royal Training Award which is awarded to us um, and just over another 40 organisations last year for our apprenticeship scheme and the work that we continue to do in supporting our apprentices through COVID. So we received our award virtually. I've been promised a visit to the palace once COVID has lifted and we are a bit more freer and the world reopens. So I'm really looking forward to that. In the meantime, we had the opportunity to meet Princess Anne uh, virtually, but it's not quite the same as going through the palace tours, as I'm sure you'll agree. Okay, and I just want to finish off with a photo of our R35, and I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. And I think Lorna, I've stayed within time. I'm still on mute. I'm back now. Uh, you've done very well. I was the one that ran over at the beginning and obviously we started a little later. But hey, those of you that know me know, you know, I might as well continue in the way that I normally go on. Any questions from anyone for Alison? Um, feel free to type them into the chat or to put your hand up if you know how to do that in a Zoom meeting. Or if you think about a question later on, come back then. Um, but that was a, an information packed session. That was fabulous. Thank you very much, Alison, as always. You're welcome. Thanks, um, Lorna. No problem. We're going to go over to um, Lance now, who works at the City College um, Plymouth, and he is going to talk to us about some of the opportunities, the courses, the qualifications that, that they offer. Over to you, Lance. 
Thank you, Laura. Now I'm just going to share my screen and get myself set up, and then uh, I'll get going. Uh, it should be quite quick. Okay, yeah, good evening, everybody, and um, thank you for sticking with us, and thank you, Alison, for your very comprehensive presentation. Um, I'm going to talk about three specific things, some of the things that Lorna's already spoken about, possibly some of the stuff that Alison's also spoken about, but just from a um, point of view from um, City College Plymouth, um, as obviously one of the biggest training providers in the southwest and certainly in Plymouth. Um, I'm going to start off with um, the kind of progression that you can take and where you can go from there. And then I'm going to move on to some of the green skills in the blue economy and then finish off with some of the apprenticeships, which, um, like I said, Lorna's already touched on, but I'll keep it as brief as possible. And then we can maybe catch up on a little bit of time. Um, so in terms of uh, skills in the maritime sector, um, City College Plymouth offers a full range of courses starting at level two through to level four, five and six. Um, you can study a full range of qualifications, whether that be um, marine engineering, naval architecture, electrical electronic engineering, mechanical engineering, um, and even marine autonomy. Um, and like I said, we go all the way through from a level two qualification, getting your basic skills, getting you started in the industry, right the way through to level six qualification, qualification such as a bachelor's degree in integrated technologies engineering which hopefully this year we'll be adding four pathways to that um, linked to electrical, mechanical, um, naval architecture and marine autonomy. Um, so lots and lots of exciting opportunities there within that. Um, we offer both full-time and day release models. Um, so depending on whether you're coming in as an apprentice or whether you're coming in to study on a full-time basis, um, we've pretty much got something for everybody. And obviously that would depend on where you are in your own career. So whether you're a school leaver and you're thinking of going into the maritime sector as a career, um, maybe you're changing a career. You know, there's lots of people that are changing careers at the moment because obviously what's happened with the pandemic um, and maybe the sectors that they're already in um, have maybe suffered more so than, than certainly maritime has. Um, there's opportunities for you to progress um, through maritime on that basis or maybe you're already in maritime sector and you just want to progress your career and actually get higher qualifications which then allow you to progress and maybe get yourself a higher salary um, so there's a full range of qualifications one of the things that we quite often find particularly in our he side um, so working with our university level students at level four five and six is there's a bit of a, a misconception that a lot of them um, our school leavers, and yes, we do have students who come to us who have just gained their A-levels or maybe a BTEC qualification, um, but we also get a lot of people that are older in their careers, so they might be 30s, 40s, 50s, and in fact, last year, we even had a couple of students that were with us that were in their 60s and just looking to gain additional qualifications because it was an interest of theirs, and that's perfectly fine. You know, our, our students work very well with our lecturing staff, and we're there to support them the best we possibly can. Um, as Lorne has already mentioned, you know, the, the actual um, economy has taken a bit of a down, downturn, but actually in terms of, of green economy and green skills and the blue economy, then there is a, an expectation that by 2030, um, this is going to double in size and therefore there is a need for jobs. Um, in 2020, just before Christmas back in November, uh, the UK government announced the 10 point plan linked to the green industrial revolution. Um, and although this plan covers lots of sectors, including public transport, housing and carbon capture technologies, um, maritime also focuses very, very largely on this. Um, and there's lots of jobs relating to zero emission vessels, offshore wind um, and marine autonomy. And there's lots of different things within that. Um, already City College was on that journey in terms of moving green skills and actually making sure that some of our modules link to that. Um, so this year, some of our students are working on hydrogen fuel cell technologies, putting them into smaller vessels to test to see if hydrogen fuel cells can actually work better than electric, maybe, and or, or not. Um, and there's also students that are building their engine capacity to work 
um, on, like I say, marine autonomy. So moving away from controlled craft to those that work alone and you can send them off out to sea and they basically do exactly what you need them to do. Um, and last year we had our first students who actually took part in that marine autonomy and we actually set them a challenge that by the end of the year they would have their craft sailing around a uh, boating lake by themselves doing various things and that went really really well so there are already students that are moving along that pathway um, alongside this Plymouth has grand plans to become the first national marine park which will not only see Plymouth Sound come under protected status allowing for biodiversity to thrive but will also provide engineers with a safe testing ground um, with its own underwater 5G network which will be one of the first in the UK um, this will help develop new technologies such as the marine autonomous vessels that I'd already spoken, to, spoken about. Um, and working with our accredited body, University of Plymouth, and you'll hear from David later, um, we are leading in this field and certainly from a marine autonomous um, point of view, we believe that we've got the first foundation degree in the UK based around this, possibly even the world. Um, like I said, you know, depending on where you're starting, you can start anywhere, um, but a lot of our apprentices come in at level two. Um, they can maybe take on an engineer maintenance or engineer oper operative qualification over two years, um, which gives you the basic skills and knowledge required for the industry. Um, but before you know it, and Alison's already alluded to this, a lot of students move on to level four or higher national certificates um, and actually take part in an engineer manufacturing technician apprenticeship whilst undertaking their HNC on a part-time basis. Um, the apprenticeship itself can be anything from three to four years. Um, however, the HNC side of it allows you to progress very nicely onto a foundation degree and even a BSc, as, as I've already mentioned. Um, there are obviously many, many employers in the city. You know, Plymouth is renowned for being a marine city and a maritime city. You've already heard from, heard from Alison in terms of the leisure industry. You're going to hear from Hannah from Babcock in the terms of defence and marine industry. But there's lots and lots of other things there um, that you can tap into. So it, it doesn't matter where you come from and what your interests are. There are loads and loads of opportunities. Um, and just for lockdown, I was at a careers event at one of the local schools. Um, and we use virtual reality to try and engage with students. Um, and try and get them thinking about marine and maritime sector as, as a career opportunity. And one of the students was there and he was saying, I'm a gamer, I lie, I like, you know, work in this kind of field, but I want to go into games development. And then when I started showing him the virtual reality side of stuff and how that can be used in the maritime sector, that was his, his, his whole perception changed. And he started to think as, as marine and maritime, where there's a lot more jobs than, than the game sector, as much as that's very exciting. Um, but there's a lot more jobs and career opportunities there and he started to think that as, a, as his career pathway and that obviously made it a, quite a nice change for him and something that I hope that he'll probably go on to. Um, there's also a lot of investment in facilities in the city. So Plymouth's got its own marine enterprise zone at Oceansgate and City College Plymouth will be moving uh, certainly its HE provision down there and we'll also have some of our FE provision down there very soon which will be bespoke workshops that will engage with local employers and will give opportunities for, for students um, from schools and stuff to come down and actually see that. But in terms of the apprenticeship side of stuff, like I said, there's lots and lots of opportunities across the maritime sector. Um, speak to Princess Yacht, speak to Babcock, have a good search around because there's lots of smaller industries, there's lots of small to medium enterprises that are looking for one to two or three apprentices and, and there's lots and lots of opportunities out there for you. Um, and just really, like Alison said, and I'm sure Hannah will say the same at the end or throughout the, throughout the thing, if you've got any questions, then please let me know and I'll do my best to answer. And that's it from me, Lorna. Nice and short and sweet. Perfect. Thank you. There is a question uh, for you, actually, in the chat about people that might have got themselves onto one college course and then make a decision that what they want to do is to move into a, a maritime qualification. So I think it's a question about switching partway through. Um, I don't know if you want to answer that one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, every we, we get quite a few students who, who not only switch courses, but they switch colleges. Um, we get students who come up from Cornwall um, and even we've got, well, this year we've had students actually decided that they're, they're moving to the city to, to try and look at maritime careers and have come down from places like Scotland and places like that. 
Um, we take everybody on their own merit. So if you're thinking of switching, contact the college. We can have a look at the qualifications that you've already undertaken or part qualifications, that's the case. We can look at your previous employment, if that's the case. Um, and we can take all that into consideration. And, you know, like I said, take you on under your own merit. There might be an opportunity that you have to do something to get you on board in in the first instance it may not we you know we'll look at every individual as an individual case we don't have a broad brush across everybody perfect thank you and uh, um paul uh, one of our attendees has answered a question about apprenticeships so um i think they're talking i think he's talking about travel to and from college to support an apprenticeship that that sort of support can exist as well which is really good um, Alison, if you're still there, there's a question that's appeared in the chat that's for you, actually. I don't know if you're able to answer that just before we move on. Hi, Lorna. Yes, I'm answering the questions in chat, so don't worry. Oh, perfect. Thank you. That's lovely. OK, so our next speaker is Hannah Rose from Babcock. So if I can hand over to you, Hannah. I saw you briefly early. <laughs> Ah, there you are. Hello. 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 Hi. Um, right, I'm just going to share my screen um, and make sure I've got my sound on. So, okay, let me know if you can't hear the video that I'm going to be playing. I hate this bit. It's the most stressful part of my job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean whether or not you make yeah. it play. I mean, when I want to go make it play and you just, you yeah. know, it's just can horrendous. Can see the screen? We can see the screen, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. I'm just trying to get it onto a proper view. This won't go. Uh, sorry, I can't get rid of the panel at the top. Um, Will it not let you do the slideshow option and then from the Oh, beginning? I can't actually get to it. There's a there's a panel at the top, which I can't. Is it the black one that says you are now sharing yeah. your screen? That will move. That will drag across your screen if you. There you go. There you are. There we go. Can you see that all right? We can. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, I um, just want to introduce myself. Um, my name is Hannah Rose and I work for Babcock International um, as part of the early careers team. Um, and in today's talk, I will be telling you about not just apprenticeships, but the early careers options at, at Babcock. So that will also be covering um, uh, undergraduate focus um, and graduate as well. Um, so just to kind of start off with, um, so you most people know who, who Babcock are. Um, so we're Babcock International based at Devonport. Um, now the actual dockyard, this is just some interesting facts for you, is uh, 650 acres. We have 14 dry docks and four miles of waterfront as well. And we are an international organization. So in total, we employ around about 35,000 people. And I think at Devonport, we have around about 7,000, I think, um, maybe slightly more. Um, and the intake of apprentices that we had last year was 145. And graduates, I believe, was 160. So you can see that you know, we, we recruit um, a, a lot of numbers. So who is Babcock? So we're, we're an engineering, um, a critical engineering company, and we, our clients are um, the, the, the Royal Navy, and um, that's who, who we deal with um, at Devonport. Um, but also we have four key sectors. So we've got um, marine, nuclear, aviation, and um land as well so that's kind of like across the whole of the uk and and internationally um we are actually um western europe's largest nail 
naval base, um, which I wasn't actually aware of when I first joined. So that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and as I said, we, we have around about, oh, I think it's, it says here, 5,000 people in addition to service, support, service personnel. So yeah, a, a lot of people on site. Um, and we also support around 400 local firms and contribute approximately 10% of our income to Plymouth as well. So what I'd like to do is I'm just going to move on to a video and I hope that you will get the sound for this. And it's just basically showcasing, um, you know, the, the Devonport and Babcock International. So I hope you're able to see that all right. There we go. So yeah, I just wanted to give you a bit of an insight there as to you know what it's like at Babcock. Um, so basically moving on to early careers. Um, so the Babcock nuclear and marine sector, um, we have a dedicated early careers team. Um, and, and what we what our aim is is to basically open doors to meaningful encounters um, with young people and um, people that would be interested in the industry. Um, with the meaningful encounters as well, we're very much aligned to the Gatsby benchmarks um, with the schools. So we have a variety of STEM-based activities. Uh, obviously, we've got our apprenticeship programs, we've got graduate placements and work experience um, opportunities. So this year, generally, we have an annual um, work experience opportunity, which takes place in June every year. And that would normally be a week's long um, duration. And so, and students would come on site and we would have a whole week of like some fun packed activities, educational activities um, all around the dockyard. So they get, you know, real nice experience. And in the end, they would have a project, um, you know, something that, that they would that they'd be able to take back with them and a competition. Obviously, this year is going to be slightly different. Um, but with everything, you know, we've had to adapt. So our annual future engineers work experience will actually take place virtually this year and that will be over a three day period. Um, we also have a STEM ambassador network. So we have around about 420 STEM ambassadors. So usually, as I mentioned, we would be going out into schools, but we've developed um, a lot of virtual platforms now and activities and we've actually um, got a, a, a Lego manufacturing um, activity that we're sending out to schools and we're doing a lot of zooming into schools and, and, and you know giving our activities that way. Uh, we've recently um, setting up an apprentice ambassador network so that is for the apprentices to really showcase their apprenticeships. Um, our apprentices are really proud of working for Babcock and really proud of working um, of their trades. So it gives them kind of like a nice um, 
ability to be able to to you know showcase their trades and and promote their their trades as well often going to their past schools um, we do a lot of school liaison activities and we also do a lot of liaison activities with the dwp and other external organizations um, and internal and external career fairs and also university liaison as well. So that's very much what the early careers team covers in a nutshell, and um, there is a, a lot more. So we've got here um, our latest uh, campaign, Make It Big with the Babcock Apprenticeship. Um, now our apprentices, apprenticeship um, uh, applications they run through from November through to the end of March so um, we will be uh, closing that the, the applications at the very end of March we've got a really long established apprenticeship program um, we're also in the top 100 um, employers as, as well for apprenticeships um, and there literally is a world of opportunities at Babcock, um, lots of different specialisms. And after you've finished an apprenticeship, um, there is great opportunity to be able to progress within the company as well. We offer you very hands on technical experience in the workplace. Um, while you're undertaking the, the college course on a part time basis. So in the first year, you'd be going to City College Plymouth and you'd be based at the college. And then in your second, third and fourth year, you'd be based in the dockyard. And there's lots and lots of career opportunities, future development opportunities, you know, to, to those who wish to obtain a higher qualification as well. Um, and that is, uh, you know, um, once you know you finish your apprenticeship, loads of opportunities within the dockyard. And we have a lot of senior managers who started as apprentices and now they are senior managers within the dockyard. Um, so we're, we're a great believer in apprenticeships. So we've got here the, the apprenticeships that we offer. So the engineering is engineering apprenticeship level three. And we have, and this is specific to Devonport. Um, so I'm not covering the whole of Babcock International here. This is specific just to Devonport. So we um, employ apprentice fabricators, um, electrical fitters, mechanical fitters, marine pipe fitters, uh, welders, and support engineers. Um, and these are absolutely critical roles um, within Babcock. Uh, as we know, um, you know, that there's a big push on STEM at the moment, um, and there is a shortage of, of skilled workers, you know, within the STEM area. So it's really, really important, you know, um, to, to be able to, you know, build the, the future workforce um, for, for the UK in terms of really getting those skill sets up for, for engineering. Um, we do have um, an, another session actually on the 25th, if you wanted to join that, which um, you can actually meet our apprentice development managers and they go through um, each of the, these trades so they can explain it a little bit more. Um, so yeah, that's on the 25th at 6.30. Uh, so we'll advertise that at, at some point. But that gives you an idea of some of our level three apprenticeships in engineering. Um, they are a four year course as, as well. Um, so, yeah. Right. So now we've also got a higher level apprenticeship, which is a level four. And these apprenticeships, um, the, so the entry requirements that you would have to have for the level three is maths, English and science uh, four to nine. Um, or equivalent and for your level four it would be a math English and science GCSE four to nine but also a levels as well so an a level in either math science um, or a related subject um, C and above and we've got here um, the, 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 the different options that you can have so we've got commissioning engineer and that's testing fault find finding um, on ships and submarine systems and to make sure they function correctly. Uh, you've got your design engineers, they create the designs and proposals for new equipment and upgrades, uh, that's for the ships and the subs. Um, and also output management, which again is the designing of maintenance programs for the warships 
Um, naval architects could also involve docking and undocking ships and submarines. So these pathways will actually lead you to a higher um, to become a higher level um, mechanical engineer um, or a higher level electrical engineer or higher level able naval architect um, engineer as well and the business and the, the marine sector are screaming out for naval architects so again really good um, apprenticeship to get into and a and also lots of further development skills um, and opportunities that, that you can have at Babcock. We also have business administration. Um, this is a level two apprenticeship. It's 24 month apprenticeship program and you wouldn't go to college, you'd actually be based in the dockyard um, and you'd be learning you know the essential skills um, of business administration um, and support uh, so you know providing the customer service skills assisting with reports you also get moved around in your first year i believe it's in four four different business placements so um, basically so you can experience um, what it's like to work in different areas um, and um, departments in Babcock. So you could be working in the early careers team, you could be working um, in an engineering department, all doing, or you could be a PA doing all the support work that is absolutely vital for any business to be able to work functionally. So yes, we need those engineers, but we also need people that, that can you know, really come on board and work functionally within the business. Um, and with that business admin qualification, afterwards, again, there's so many opportunities. So one of my colleagues, she is now a, um, a resource and business partner. Another colleague of mine is one of our communication specialists. Um, also, another colleague started off um, as an apprentice. And now she's an apprentice manager. So it just goes to show, you know, the pathways that you can take um, in, into Babcock. Uh, we also have a higher level business um, apprenticeship. Now, this here, as you can see, covers finance. Um, we are only recruiting for finance this year on the higher level um, business, level four. We do also, um, in other years, uh, recruit supply chain and also commercial as well. But there wasn't that need this year, but there's likely to be a need next year. So just say there are, again, further options. So just as an example, really, some of the salaries that you can expect, and I know that we touched on salaries previously. Um, so this is just a snapshot for the engineering and the business admin. This is not for the higher level, um, so not for the degree based um, qualifications. So in a level three engineering apprenticeship, as I said, it's four years long. Uh, your first year, you'll be at college and you'll be paid around about 11,280. And then you can see that moving up the years to get to year four, you would be on the training salary of around about 24,925. Now, obviously, once you've actually um, done that apprenticeship, you can move on to further that salary even further. Uh, we then have the higher level engineering um, and the first year starts off at 17,075 and again you can see that progression going up the years so and in year four you'll be on around about 28,675 and to the left of the screen you can see an example of some of the benefits that we have here at Babcock so you'd get 25 days holiday plus bank holidays um, you can see that we give a competitive salary um, fully funded qualifications as well that you can take that, that you can take up. Um, we have cycle to work scheme. We have pension contribution scheme, uh, flexible working. Now that would be more for um, people like support office staff like myself than the engineers because um, it, it's a bit more difficult to be flexible for the engineers um, and personal development opportunities. You could become a STEM ambassador. You, you could become an apprentice ambassador. Um, and we've got an employee support um, and an assistance program as well. So in the times of COVID, that's been really helpful to, to, to people to be able to use that if needed. 
Right. So here is just an example of um, an, another apprenticeship. So th this is um, for the defence um, systems technology, and it would be a solutions engineer. Now, um, I think it was Lance that mentioned about coding and stuff like that. So if you're into kind of like coding and the more technical side of things, the solutions engineer um, degree apprenticeship would be a good one for you. Um, and you can see here, it says the solutions team, it's made up of software and hard, hardware engineers. Um, they produce proof of concept designs, rapid phototypes and bespoke solutions um, to solve problems and, and, del and to delight our customer. Um, technical backgrounds in communication software, radio frequencies. So you can see that this is a real tech role um, and it would be involved in the software and IT and I IP networking as well. So this is on offer as a, a degree apprenticeship but it's also potential for a graduate opportunity as well. So I'm coming to the end shortly. So just to um, talk about our graduate opportunities and undergraduate opportunities. So we offer, um, the Early Careers team offers um, undergraduate opportunities. Um, and there's an awful, an awful lot of opportunities to learn, develop um, your skills and to enable you to, to, to take, you know, a full time career. So we have four undergraduate um, summer placements and they can be between 10 to 12 weeks paid internships. Um, and that's over the summer holidays. And it gives you the opportunity to work in Babcock and in your chosen discipline as well. Um, and that, that also helps support your degree. Um, also, we do in, uh, industrial placements in some parts of the business. Um, so that's a paid 12 month placement. And again, it's perfect to be able to get you into Babcock. And it's both of these are a nice little um, stepping stone to get you onto a graduate placement as well. So here we have the graduate program. Um, and as you can see, there is a lot of opportunities um, within the graduate programme. So it gives individuals a chance to gain um, different, they gain exposure to different sectors, um, learning technical, um, enhancing your, your technical learning, um, lots of different placements as well. So you're not just going to be on one placement, you are moved around the business as well in your chosen area of expertise. Um, so you could be covering opportunities in engineering, science, business management, project management, commercial, naval architect, human resources. So you can see there all the opportunities that, that you could have um, if you were looking, um, you know, maybe you've done a degree. Um, and it, if that's the case, you can still apply for the graduate opportunities as well. OK, so we're very keen to, yes, have, um, you know, to, to be able to build our apprenticeships up. Um, but equally, if you're wanting to return back into um, a, an, an engineering STEM environment, we have a programme called STEM Returners um, that, that you can apply for. And that, again, helps you get back into the world of, of work at Babcock. So I think I've rambled off um, on enough there. Um, a lot to cover. As I said, this was all of our early careers um, uh, programmes. So please ask any questions. And I will just keep my details up here. Um, so any early careers inquiries, you might have an inquiry about, say, the, the, the work experience or any STEM activities that we have. Um, you can email the early careers inquiries. Um, if you had any um, questions about apprentice recruitment, so that might be, for example, um, does this particular grade count towards you know, my, my, my entry, um, you can ask that question in, in that email. And also we have the graduate recruitment inquiries as well. So uh, I'm just gonna have a quick look to see if we've got any questions. Um, there we go, and that, that's me finished. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been answering them in the chat oh, as we've lovely. gone through actually. We've been, we've been your wing. Huh? <laughs> dealing with sending off there was questions about what would be studied in the first year of a 
of a, um, a level four apprenticeship. There was questions about whether or not a level three, if someone's got a level three, whether that would be considered entry criteria, but it's been ably handled by your yes. glamorous assistants here. Not me, I haven't answered any of the questions, but the other glamorous assistants. <laughs> Okay, um, that was fantastic. Thank, Thank you. So, you. Any other questions for Hannah? Pop them in the chat and we'll pick them up. Um, right, we're going to do something a little bit different now. So if we haven't completely scared them off, if um, Cleopatra and Owen are there and they're happy to put their cameras on, I'll do the same. Um, aha, there you are. How funny. You're sitting next to each other on my screen. I don't know about everybody else's, but that's extraordinary. Um, Owen and Cleo, is it, it's Cleo, I take it, yeah, are award-winning apprentices with Babcock. And um, so Lance knows them from City College because that's where they've done their apprenticeship. And although Hannah doesn't know them personally, obviously there's a link to Babcock. So they very kindly agreed to give up their evening for me so that we can talk to them a little bit about their apprenticeships. And I have five questions that I'm going to ask them each so um, you're right on the spot here but to be fair you have had sight of the questions in advance haven't you if we're really honest so if we start with Cleo if you want to unmute yourself you two as well if that's okay we start with Cleo can I ask you to tell me your full name um, we know who you work for but which department you work for and what your job title is please Cleo yeah, so um, my full name's Cleopatra Thatcher, bit of a mouthful, so Cleo is absolutely fine. Um, like you say, I work for Babcock. Um, I work in the class output management team, which Hannah mentioned earlier on the slides. Um, my role is currently working for Type 26 Future Program. So I'm looking at the ships that are currently being built and how we as a company are gonna be in a position to support those ships. Um, so my job doesn't have a job title yet because I'm writing it so <laughs> um Fantastic. so it, it will eventually but but not right now but yeah future programs I think yeah you don't want it to have too many words in because your business cards oh. get really long and thin <laughs> like that and they're a real exactly. pain Owen same question to you then so can you tell us your full name tell us which department you work in and if you've got a job title or whether you're currently writing it as well so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's uh, Owen Bayliss, and I'm an ex-apprentice. Um, I've now finished, finished in September. Um, so I work for um, Defence Systems Technology, and you may have seen that in the PowerPoint that Hannah presented. Now I work for um, a little section in DST called Marine Systems. So I specialise mainly in fluid systems. That's like your centrifugal pumps, your positive displacement pumps. Um, and my role, um, or my, my role title, um, is a technical engineer. Okay, perfect. So the first proper question, so we're gonna ask you five questions, is what drew you to the maritime sector? So Cleo, can I ask you that first? You'll have to unmute again, perfect. Yeah, um, well, for me, I, I was a bit late to, to engineering. I studied maths, it was what I was always very good at, so that was sort of what I followed and um, come the end of sort of my my maths degree I realized all the things I loved about maths were, were actually engineering I, I did, didn't know that until that point so I had to do quite a bit of research I'd met Babcock at quite a few job fairs um, but because it was new to me I had to go away I had to research so I researched all the sectors that, that Hannah talked about earlier and marine just stood out as, as just this huge expanding sector and, and it was just obvious that I could really clearly see where I wanted to go in that sector, what the opportunities might be. And then I guess just on like a personal note, I'm not from the Southwest. So the idea of just working by the sea and looking at it every day just <laughs> seemed amazing. So, yeah. Good. That's, uh, that sounds like all very positive. Owen, same question to you then. What drew you to the sector? So, um, for, for as long as I can remember, um, I've always been very interested in uh, marine technology, uh, your ships and submarines. Um, I've lived in Plymouth all my life, and uh, as a young boy, I used to watch the warships go out at sea uh, with my dad, and I always uh, was very fascinated with that kind of that side of things. Um, and uh, with regards to where I wanted to go as an engineer, um, I really I'm, I'm very interested in uh, large scale complex engineering projects and um, 
it's exactly what the dockyard offers, um, particularly as we've discussed with um, the ship building, but also ship support. Um, so that that was really what um, inspired me into the um, into working at the dockyard and in the uh, marine marine sector. Perfect. Now the next question is about what your entry route was. So it would be useful for us to know what age you were when you started your programme and whether you came in for a, a, on a full time job, whether you did some work experience first, whether it was straight into an apprenticeship or whatever. Let's mix it up a little bit and ask Owen that one first this time. Yeah, so um, I joined at 16. Uh, I joined on the craft apprenticeship um, initially. Um, after my first year, I, I moved on to the um, higher apprenticeship. Um, and so I, I came in with um, GCSEs um, and no experience at all, no hands on experience whatsoever. And um, the apprenticeship has uh, really, really uh, given me a, a good range of essential practical engineering knowledge and skills. So what level are you qualified at now? Is it level three or level uh, four? No, so uh, I'm qualified level five. I've got um, a foundation degree in mechanical engineering, um, but I am looking to start um, a BSc in mechanical engineering with the Open University, all funded by, uh, by Babcock. Wow, okay. Um, fantastic, brilliant. Cleo, so over to you then, same questions, what your entry route was. Yeah, so, so I was a bit older um, because I went to uni first. I, this, I didn't know this is what I wanted to do. So um, I was 24 by the time I joined the company. So um, an older apprentice, I guess, compared to, say, Owen. Um, but I came on the higher level apprenticeship scheme. So I joined um, studying at level four. Um, I'm in my fourth year now. So this August, I'll come out of that apprenticeship. And I, as Owen said earlier, I'll also be qualified level five. Perfect. Fantastic. So um, question four is, what is your career goal? So Cleo, can we ask you that? <laughs> yeah, um, it's still really early on for me. Um, I'm, I'm currently doing my um, career plan at the moment with my mentor. Um, I think where I'm working at the minute, I find it just really fascinating, you know, looking really into the future and, and where we're going to go as a company. Um, I think I, for me, that's that's where I want to stay. I want to be looking at where how we progress as a company, how we bring in new technologies to manage these, you know, world class ships that that we're building in the country right now. And uh, but beyond that, I think I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see. There's so many things to choose from. Brilliant. And Owen, have you got your eye on the chief executive's office, or what, what's your plan? <laughs> um, so. My plan, my aspiration is um, to become a, a design engineer. Um, so my role at the moment is um, a mix of, um, of things really. It's, it's, it's a bit of the management, but it's also a bit of design engineering, but uh, I'm looking to really um, become a design engineer with, with fluid systems. So again, looking at them, centrifugal pumps, uh, cooling systems for the propulsion of ships, submarines, that side of thing. Wow. Okay, that's impressive. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, not really. I mean, I know what they are. But I don't know how they work. Not my skills. Um, okay, so um, next question. So who's been the most important person on your career journey so far? Cleo? Um, I think th there's been lots of Babcock, lots of managers. Um, but I think if I'm being completely honest, who's been the most important right from day one? it's probably not one person it's a group of people and it's the apprentices that I started with um I remember when I started I think the industry for me it, it felt quite overwhelming especially you come into the dockyard and as Hannah said it is massive and there are so many different roles there and I thought you know I'm going to choose one specific business unit and one department and one job how am I ever gonna you know learn this this huge expanse of opportunities and actually it's, it's those fellow apprentices right from day one became, we became such a good group of friends and that's remained and my network now because of that across the yard is huge you know I know people in most business units across the yard now and that's been really beneficial especially so early on in my career I think you know I can really hold my own in, in certain meetings when people need a contact you know so and that's a that's a really nice place to be when you realize that someone's coming to you for advice and you might be feeling really nervous inside but you manage to give out that 
like now, when you come across as really, really calm. Owen, what about you? Who's been the most important person in your career journey? So there's um, two people really, um, and that's my apprentice development manager, or my old apprentice development manager, um, and my mentor, or my manager, my manager. Um, now, I, as, I, as I said, I, I came in at 16, and um, the whole experience of, uh, you know, starting my first career was very, very daunting. I was very, very nervous, um, and, uh, you know, I lacked um, a bit of confidence, and really the, it, it was my apprentice manager and my mentor who really moulded me and empowered me with the confidence I now have to you know run my own my own project so really uh, I, I owe a lot to them for, for all the support they've given me. Brilliant right last question just really quickly so in in two or three words or five words if you were able to give yourself some advice when you were trying to choose where you wanted to go with your career um say it when you were 16 what would what would those words of advice be Cleo um I think it for me it would be don't panic so don't panic when things go wrong or don't go to plan as long as you're working hard and you're passionate about what you're doing it's all going to work out just fine brilliant and Owen what about you yeah on a similar similar note to Cleo really um it's just don't panic and don't worry. Um, you know, you, as an apprentice, you're not expected to know, you know, everything. Um, and you, you're supported by the business to to really expand your knowledge and you know gain your gain your skills and become a competent engineer. So, to anyone doubting themselves, like I did when I first started, please don't because uh, you, you you're well supported. Absolutely brilliant. I just want to say a huge thank you to you both. Obviously, Lance told me about you two and we were just waiting for Babcock to say it was OK and we could have you to join the... You must, you must be feeling very proud, Lance, right now. I'm sure you are. I am indeed. The only thing I'm better spoiled about is none of them said that I was the person that... Most they, you important know, person in their career. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. off the Christmas card list, eh? Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you both. OK, thank you very much for joining us this evening. That was amazing. Um, right, our last speaker tonight is David Atkins from the University of Plymouth. So, um, oh, there he is. Lovely. David, sorry, you're, um, you're at the top of the bill, let's say. Let's put it that way around. Over to you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I, I seem to be, be, be occupying the graveyard shift again, which is a, a normal normal position for me. It's normally I'm normally standing between where somewhere and, and lunch or dinner or something like that. So uh, I'll, I'll try and keep this fairly brief. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the speakers uh, so far this evening. It's certainly going to be a hard act to follow, but I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, as I said, I'm David Atkins. I am uh, associate head of uh, one of the associate heads of Plymouth Business School at the University of Plymouth. Uh, I focus on, I, I will admit a vested interest, uh, I, I, I do look after marketing and admissions for the, for the school, so, so, so recruit, student recruitment is part of my brief. Uh, but I'm sort of here tonight really to talk more, more about maritime from a, a kind of shipping business perspective, if you will. Uh, a little bit about me uh, and how I got into maritime. Uh, I kind of, I grew up in Portsmouth, uh, I grew up around the sea. Uh, my dad used to be in the Navy, uh, and so it was sort of in me from, from the very beginning, really. Uh, I did the maritime business degree at Plymouth about a million years ago now. Well, it certainly feels that way. Uh, and, and, and I kind of chose it because it was something I felt really interested in. If I tell you that I hated school, and I scraped through school with the barest minimum of qualifications, uh, I've got the letters on my office wall to prove it, if anybody wants to come and have a look. Uh, but I absolutely hated it. Uh, I worked for a while. I came back into to education. And, and then, as I say, I, I picked the maritime business degree because it, it looked interesting. It looked something that I could actually get my, my teeth into and, and give me something at the end of it. Uh, I was thinking earlier, I'm probably one of the few non-Babcock people here this evening. But actually, I did do an internship and was offered a job with DML. But the, for those of you local, uh, the kind of the forerunners of Babcock uh, in the in the dockyard here. Uh, I was faced with a choice between taking a, a graduate scheme with Babcock or with, with DML, sorry, uh, or going to sea. 
I, I chose to go to sea. I joined the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Service. Uh, I went to the Britannia Royal Naval College. Uh, I went to sea. I saw some very hot and sandy places, uh, as you can well imagine, given Britain's foreign policy over the last uh, 20 years or so. Uh, apologies, there is a dog barking in the background. He's, he, he wants to join in. He's feeling neglected. So I, I do apologize if you're picking that up. Um, I, I had spent time at HMS Raleigh uh, over in Tor Point, uh, training uh, sort of logisticians for, for the Navy. Uh, before my wife decided I didn't want to be in the Navy anymore, I didn't want to go to sea anymore, uh, and so I came ashore and, and got a job, with, again with the Ministry of Defence, but uh, particularly focused in, in areas of maritime. Uh, I worked for the Hydrographic Office up in Taunton, uh, but I spent a lot of time in around ships and submarines in, in Bristol up at Abbey Wood. Uh, I joined the university about a decade ago now, uh, which seems quite scary. Uh, it's a terrifying thing where that time's gone. Um, and since then, I, I've really been involved in our, our maritime business programs. If I can show you uh, this, if I can just share my screen with you. Uh, it doesn't want to play at the moment. Sorry, give me a moment. Will, where is that gone? Right, ah, there it is. That's why I can't. Sorry, I've got too many screens uh, open at the moment. So, so there we go. Hopefully you, you can all see that. Um, so thinking about maritime, there's been a lot of talk so far this evening around engineering and, and a lot of those skills. I think uh, Lorna did a really good job at the beginning of, of highlighting the breadth and the diversity of the maritime industry. And really what I want to do now is sort of focus in more on, on sort of the shipping side of it, if you will. Uh, for many people, that those images on screen at the moment are the kind of closest many people get to the shipping industry. It's invisible. We, we don't think about it. But if we think about everyday life, we can start to see how the shipping industry, how the maritime industry touches our lives in every single way. Uh, right from looking at the cup, I've just had a cup of tea from uh, the, the minerals that go into the manufacture of that, to the paper, to computers, to everything I can see around me in some way has been touched by the maritime sector. Uh, I say that's a, the, the closest a lot of people get. That might be a little bit closer uh, when we see things like this on the news. But for many people, shipping is a very invisible industry. We just don't think about it. It either takes place in, in typically bland offices or, or quite often out at sea well over the horizon. If we think about world trade, depending which set of statistics you want to have a look at, uh, at least over 80% of world trade is carried by sea. Uh, that gives you an indication there that the darker the, the, the red, the, the more intense there is shipping activity around the world. And that's everything from PlayStations to uh, cups to minerals, coal, like everything you can think of that goes into everyday trade, everyday life, is touched by the maritime sector. It does revolve a lot around boxes. If we think about manufactured goods, many of them come into the in, into Europe, into the UK from, from the Far East, uh, many of them in boxes like you can see on there. But it's more than that. It is so much more than that. Uh, just some in, I, ideas there about, about what's in the industry. And what I'm looking at now is this from a management perspective. We're looking at this from managing uh, the logistics flows getting people to and from the ships, so you see the cruise ship there. We at the university have a program in cruise management. So if people are interested in hospitality, but hospitality at sea in terms of cruise ships, this is an ideal opportunity to sort of get stuck into that. Thinking about maritime, what is maritime business? Well, it's everything that supports the maritime sector. Everything from uh, finance, insurance, uh, broking, getting cargoes onto ships, getting ships lined up for cargoes, that kind of thing, managing crews, managing people. So everyone knows what marketing is. Everyone knows what human resources is. But what about in the maritime context? How do you get a crew of very many nationalities together in one place to get them on a ship to take something to the other side of the world? Thinking of those challenges, especially we've seen many challenges in, in the, over the last year in, in COVID terms, of getting people on and off ships, keeping the world economy going. That has been a very significant challenge. 
So why us? Why Plymouth? What is it? Because well, for those of you that, that, that might know this already, Plymouth is a modern university that traces itself back to about 1860. So go work that one out. Uh, but it started life as a school of navigation, uh, and training people to go to sea. Uh, and ever since then, there has been a very real focus on uh, everything maritime uh, within the university. We're very keen to make sure that we have this mix of industry and academic experience. It's not just about the teachers uh, telling you stuff. Many of us have been involved in the industry in, in some way or another. I say, I've been to sea, I've worked on the commercial side and, and so on. Uh, and similarly, uh, many of my colleagues have, have got a similar sort of background. We pride ourselves on being a really truly international program. I think there was a question early on about Brexit and the impact on, on UK maritime. Yes, we still expect to grow. We are still an island, irrespective of Brexit. We still need everything uh, being moved by sea. But we are a very international industry. So while we're talking about the Southwest tonight and opportunities here, we're also being able to say, well, there are lots of opportunities out there in, in, in the world as well some of them in Plymouth and, and some of them further afield. That gives you an opportunity to explore some of your dreams. Uh, certainly a, a friend of mine that I graduated with uh, ended up flying all over the world every, every weekend by the looks of it, given Facebook at the time, uh, but is now settled with a company in the Southwest and, and works on, on sort of crewing issues for them. Uh, the industry, the shipping industry, the maritime industry around the world wants Plymouth graduates. I, I just picked out some, some quotes there. I'll, I'll leave them up on screen for a moment while I'm talking. Just some quotes there that from my email inbox, people that have emailed me saying, basically, we want Plymouth graduates. We recognize the value that they bring to the industry, uh, the confidence. Uh, I think there was, there was talk there from, from both Cleo and Owen about the kind of confidence that develops and the confidence that, that, that builds when you have a very solid training or educational program. Uh, and I think that's something that we really pride ourselves on is, is just how independent our graduates are when they move into, uh, into to employment. Where do our graduates go? Some of those names will be familiar, some of them perhaps less familiar, uh, but we have graduates all over the world in all parts of the, the sector, not just in the Southwest, but all over the world, working in some of the biggest names in shipping. That is something that we're really proud of. What that means is that wherever you are, you're never that far from a Plymouth graduate. You're never that far from somebody that you've got a, an, an interest, a, a, a sort of shared interest, some sort of shared experience, people that you know, people that you may have taught you. Uh, people that you might have been on programs with. I, I went to a, an event in the uh, Canadian High Commission in London, and behind me was somebody that, okay, I didn't know them, but they were at the university at the same time that I was as an undergraduate. Uh, it, it's amazing. Plymouth graduates seem to get everywhere. Uh, but that sort of network is really important. Uh, I think growing that network, that, I think, uh, Lorna, you asked a question about kind of a key bit of advice is, Get that network growing. It's really, really important. Uh, I hate networking. I hate trying to do that. But it is such an important thing. I can pick up the phone now to most somebody somewhere in the world that can help me with a particular challenge. That is really important. I've talked about maritime business. Yes, we offer an undergraduate maritime business program, but we also offer uh, other bits. I'm from the business school. I'll talk to you about maritime business and cruise management all evening. I'm not going to, don't worry, but I could. Uh, but if you look at these, I also teach on the Navigation and Maritime Science program. So that's training people to drive ships. Uh, I, I do a little bit of teaching on that. Uh, and you can also see some of the other options in there as well around uh, marine technology, offshore renewable energy. There's been a lot of discussion about that so far this evening, but also some new programs in autonomous systems uh, and maritime history. Don't forget there is something in the maritime industry for everybody. And the thing is, once you're in, it's a little bit like the mafia. It's really hard to escape from. There is normally something there for everybody. I said I was going to keep, try and keep it brief. I know we're, 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 it's quite late now. So, so thank you for your attention. If you do have questions, please, as I say, chat box or get hold of me somehow. You can Google me if you want to. I'm on the internet with that awful photograph that you saw 
uh, up on screen earlier. Uh, but but please do feel free if, if anybody wants to have a, any sort of conversation, I'm, I'm more than happy to do so. so. So thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. That's great. Thank you. I do enjoy doing these things with you and Lance and Alice. You just make me laugh. And Hannah, you've been terrific. And Owen and Cleo this evening as well. What superstars. I will be coming back to you two to help me with my um, industry ambassador network, actually, because I think you could really be helping me with getting messages across to young people. So now that exactly what David just said, build those networks. Once you get hold of people's details, hold on to them. We've gone over time a little bit this evening. I hope we have answered everybody's questions. The session has been recorded this evening, but you've all had your cameras off, those that are attendees, so I hope that that's okay. It will be getting uploaded onto the Maritime UK website, um, and so you'll be able to access those links to videos and things that I spoke about at the beginning. Um, we really appreciate you giving us your time this evening. I hope you found that useful. And um, if you want to get in touch with us again, I'll put my email address in the chat now, and then um, I can pass you on to one of the other speakers if you need to do that. I don't think we've got any more questions coming through. So I would just like to say thank you very much for giving us your time and sticking with us for an hour and a half. And um, we're absolutely delighted to have shared some information about the sector with you this evening. So thank you very much and bye for now.